Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily, the first English news program in Poland. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. The Civic Platform Party and its supporters reacted with great outrage against Jarosław Kaczynski's speech during the Saturday's Law and Justice Party's convention in Reshov. During his speech, the leader of the party, Kaczynski, expressed his determination to defend the family and against the sexualization of children. It is sexualization of kids who will save Polish families. The words of Jarosław Kaczyński from yesterday's Law and Justice Convention outraged the opposition, which accused the chairman of lying about them having a hidden agenda to sexualize children. Rafał Trzaskowski cannot change the core curriculum, so there wouldn't be sexual education at an age earlier than it should be. Sławomir Neumann from the Civic Platform Party says this is just hate speech. This is hate speech. It is divisive against gays and lesbians and painting them as enemies. Why are you fighting against sex education from grade 4, which was no different from before? The law and justice president calls for hatred. I thought things would perhaps change for the better after the tragedy in Gdańsk. Despite the assurances of the opposition, Patrick Yaki in the provisions contained in the LGBT plus declaration sees real threats. The issue at hand is not only a threat for children, but is also sanctions for entrepreneurs. There are saying that those who support a certain community would get priority in tenders. We see a choice between the united right that proposes real solutions like the 500 plus program and making peace with the LGBT community. Mayor of Warsaw, Rafał Trzaskowski, signed a declaration on February 18th, introducing the LGBT plus program, which meets the demands of the homosexual community. Celebrations commemorating the paratrooper of the Polish army in exile, the Silent Unseen, and the commander of the Forest Division of the anti-communist underground, codenamed Zapora, took place today in Warsaw. The commander and the heroic soldiers, along with their subordinates, were executed by the communists in Makotov prison. The cursed soldiers came to pay tribute to their commander, Major Hieronim Dekutowski. He was skinny, not big, but he had a big voice. When he got angry, everyone was afraid of him. We heard his voice during battles. Marian Pawełczak, codenamed Morwa, was fighting by Major Dekutowski's side in many battles. He still calls him a commander. He was an amazing commander. Major Dekutowski's biography is a history of everlasting fight. As the silent unseen, he was the commander of the Partisans Division in the Lubelski region. Let's remember that Dekutowski and his soldiers were fighting for Polish freedom against the communists. They were fighting for much more than this. They were defending the spirit of our nation. We have you in our memory, Major. The Kotowski's Forest Division organized over 600 attacks on communists. The major himself was captured in 1947. Around 200-300 people during the Nazi and later Soviet occupation were defending the Lubelski region. He was destroying communists and assassinating officers of the communist security services. The Kotowski targeted communist police outposts and courts. When farmers had problems, he was helping them as well. Seventy years ago, Dekutowski, along with six other soldiers, was murdered in Mokotów prison in Warsaw. Polish soldiers were dressed up in Fairmax uniforms during executions. What kind of people they must have been to dress up our heroes in Wehrmacht uniforms during executions? Communists secretly buried Dekutowski's body at the Pawonski Cemetery. His remains were found in 2012. In Defense of Poland, The Nation of Heroes is the title of a film by the Polish blogger Stefan Thompson. The short film gathered more than 420,000 views, 11,000 shares, and a few dozen thousand unlikes before Facebook decided to remove it off of its platform. Raw historical facts, statistics, and the defense of the symbol of the Polish resistance in Anchor were supposedly violating community standards. The material has been removed from my Facebook fan page, Thompson wrote on Twitter. Censorship on Facebook is becoming a trend, and its administrators seem to not care in the slightest. 
It's hard to tell what the giant social media platform deems to be controversial, but it's becoming more apparent that Facebook favors that of liberal, anti-Polish content over the conservative and patriotic. After less than a day due to people talking it to the internet to express their dissatisfaction in the media intervention, Facebook administrators decided to bring back the film. Russia saw one of the biggest protests in the capital in years as thousands took to the streets of Moscow and two other cities today to rally against the tighter controls and regulations over the internet backed by lawmakers. Protesters gather on the streets of Moscow to deliver speeches and chant slogans against the tighter governmental control over its internet access. A legislation was passed last month by Russian lawmakers in the name of prevention against foreign meddling. But some Russian media as well as citizens have likened it to an iron curtain in place to curb dissent. The added regulation inspired around 15,300 people to show up in protest, according to White Counter, while Moscow police put the numbers at 6,500. Members of the activists posted on Twitter saying that the police had detained 15 people at the Moscow rally while banners and balloons were confiscated. Russia has been enacting progressively tougher internet laws in recent years, requiring search engines to remove certain search results, messaging services to share encryption keys with security services, and social networks to store Russian users' personal data on servers within the country. That's it for today. See you next time. I'm Poland Daily. But stay tuned for the Poland Daily Weather Report, followed by the Poland Daily Business section. Good evening, welcome to Poland Daily Weather. Tonight the maximum temperature will be 8 degrees around Krakow, 7 degrees will be seen in Katowice and the coolest will be 2 degrees in Olsztyn with some showers as well. If we look at the forecast for tomorrow we will see a significant drop in temperatures. The maximum will be 9 degrees in Rzeszów, 7 degrees in Warsaw as well as in Krakow and the minimum 4 degrees in the northeast part of the country as well as in Olsztyn and Koszalin. Also around Olsztyn, we are expecting snow tomorrow. If we look at the forecast for the upcoming three days, we will see that the maximum temperature on Tuesday will be 6 degrees in the southern parts with a lot of snow in the country. On Wednesday, the minimum temperature will be 1 degree in the northeast and the maximum will be 8 degrees in the southwest. Thursday will be more dry with maximum temperature of 9 degrees in the southwest and the minimum of 4 in the northeast. This is all for tonight. Thank you. Poland Daily Business Edition. Tonight we are at Katowice where at the event of revolution in mobility is being held and one of those uh, exhibitors here is a company called UAVS of which Dagmara Ull is representative and welcome to our show. Yes, welcome. Uh, well, let's say a few words about UAVs because this is your area of expertise. How do you difference from other your commercial URVs that are built in the, in the world. So to say. Okay, thank you for the question. Uh, for, uh, so our uh, biggest advantage of, in, on the drones uh, market, this is uh, our new project, is to extend the flight duration. Uh, we are developing right now the new power source uh, based on the fuel cell powered with the hydrogen. So this is our main uh, advantage. Uh, we're going to extend the flight uh, even up to four hours. So basically the, the, the drones powered by the batteries, the uh, uh, lithium polymer, the flight duration is about 30 minutes, 50 minutes, till 50 minutes. Uh, yes, 30 minutes till 50 minutes. And of course, with the, the hydrogen, it's, it's much longer. But that also extends the, um, the market. Yes. It, it can be used in a long time duration, in inspection of power lines and yes. all kinds of this kind of um, uh, usage. What are the main technical obstacles that you had to overcome to make this happen? 
uh, this is completely new, new, new technology. The fuel cell based on the met metallic plates, this is something completely new. Uh, so this is one of the prob problem. There is not many ma manufacturers uh, of this uh, kind of uh, this kind of uh, fuel cell. Fuel cell. Uh, so this is one of the problem uh, with the hydrogen, of course. Uh, this is uh, another problem. But anyway, you are at the cutting edge of technology. Like few people in the world is doing exactly what yes. you. Yes, in Poland can... we're gonna be the first one. So okay, and this who are you? What is your company? Where is based? How many engineers you have? Uh, our headquarters is in uh, Krakow. So very beautiful city. Uh, we've got uh, about. 20 engineers right now working on our project. Our project is uh, uh, is drone. Uh, this is completely our construction, and we've got the production in uh, Czechowice Dziedzice. So this is the other. Okay, and the perspective markets. Uh, the perspective. So this is. Uh, uh, the markets, uh, uh, first of all, we're going to start on the Polish market, selling this to, to agriculture, uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to forest uh, organizations. Like the forest management, yes. like, like somebody who wants to fly over the forest and see yeah, through yes. the camera what is going on be below. Yes, and we are... Uh, now working on the new 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 application for our drone uh, to to agro, so with the spray system to, for the agriculture. So instead of airplanes that are being used right now yes. or other yes, yes, forms, yes. You, you, your offer is let's fly the drone and spray the field. Yes, so well, that's fantastic. That's completely new, and uh, and just a di di different dimension of, of the market that we already know. Um, what, what are the challenges that you have to overcome to, to do that in Poland? Uh, the drone market with such a big drones, uh, like we are producing, uh, this is this is quite quite new. Uh, so we got to. Uh, build the market to, to, to show the, our customers. Uh, show the capability of the machine, show the, uh, where it could fit in the existing yes. uh, procedures and so on. Okay, well, very, very interesting. The drone powered by fuel cell, it's certainly something that few people heard about and this is being designed in Poland, built in Czechowice Dziedzice by the company UAVC. Uh, that uh, Mr. Mrs. Dagmara U is from. Thank you very much for Thank participation you. in this show, Thank and that was invitation. it for tonight's Poland Daily Business. Welcome again to Poland Daily Weather. Tomorrow in our country 9 degrees is expected to be the maximum temperature. 4 degrees will be seen in the west around Zielona Góra, also in the northwestern Szczecin, 6 degrees in Wrocław, Katowice, as well as in Bydgoszcz and 7 degrees in Warsaw and Krakow. The minimum will be 4 degrees around Koszali in Olsztyn, as well as in Białystok. If we look at the map of Europe for tomorrow, we will see that the most sun will be in Lisbon, Portugal with 16 degrees. Also Sofia will see 18 degrees and a lot of sun, 15 degrees in Kiev and the minimum of 1 degree in Helsinki, Finland, 4 degrees in Moscow, Stockholm as well as in Oslo and there we are expecting some snow as well. This is all for tonight. Thank you. <laughs>
Since 2005, they have been engaged in the enormous task of documenting and preserving the last surviving remnants of the Great Neonization Campaign across the former Eastern Bloc. Their ongoing efforts have been credited with ushering in a new neon renaissance throughout Poland, a movement that began with the opening of the first and only museum of its kind in Europe. The permanent collection contains hundreds of dazzling neon signs and other electrographic artifacts, many of which were designed by the great artists of the age, who were responsible for the world-famous Polish poster school. The museum illustrates the unique characteristics of unknown art form which was born from revolution, served as state propaganda and flourished during Poland's post-war period. Okay then, Witold. So, coming up to the uh, next sign here, we have the uh, Kwiaty. Yeah, it was uh, from a flower shop uh -huh. in uh, Ochota district in Warsaw. Uh, this neon was designed by a woman. You can I see, can see the feminine touch. Yes. And actually there were much more different flowers uh, on the facade of the uh, building. We have just a few on here. Maybe uh, some viewers can uh, guess what kind of flowers they are, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, well, the whole wall was full of uh, flowers. And this is an example of a neon designed uh, not on the main street. Um, but to brighten up the uh, like local center of a district, mm -hmm. uh, so it was a really nice and interesting neon in in in, a f in its form. Uh, nowadays, I want I don't think that um, owner of the flower shop uh, could afford uh, such a big neon. So and that's also a different <laughs> era. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, where are we going next then? It's uh, Hotel Saski. That's okay. uh, yeah, a really uh, yes, huge a really, sign. Yes, a long sign. Uh, this neon was hanging over a Saski Hotel mm -hmm. in the center of Warsaw. In the last uh, few, in last uh, decade, it was uh, covered with an advertising, so you, you, could, you couldn't actually see the neon. Uh, now the building is renovated, it's uh, for offices and uh, the owner of uh, the building um, gave us this neon. He's also, he's also running uh, restaurants, uh, so he gave us um, the money for the renovation. It was uh, 10,000 zlotys for this neon wow. and 50 zlotys uh, banknotes. <laughs> we got yeah. a lot of uh, cash for... For this, for this neon. It's got a very yeah. kind of, I don't know, the 50s or 60s feel to this long kind of sloping yes. design of Saski you see along here. Yeah. So actually, and it's also very nice neon. You could, it was uh, hidden for, uh, for at least a decade, so it was interesting to get it here and got, get it renovated after such a long period. And you can see the result uh, here yeah. in the exhibition. Quite. It stands out, certainly. But you can actually now uh, also have a feeling that it's also an expensive to get a new renovated. And there are not many people uh, doing that. And the materials are also uh, expensive. It's all handmade. Uh, so it also requires skill and time. So time uh, and we do it uh, uh, one by one. Aha, uh -huh, piece by piece. Yes. All right. OK, so let's move on to the next part. Uh, so, which uh, neons are we going to look at next? Uh, Sesame is interesting. Sesame, right, it's, okay. Uh, it was a neon from a department store, actually in the city centre. Now there's a new building standing there. Um, it was run by uh, Spoem. Spoem is a cooperative. It had a lot of department stores in the communist times, but the company is much more older. Uh, dating back to the pre-war time, uh, but after the war uh, the company survived the change. Uh, usually the, those department stores were located in prominent locations mm -hmm. and had a lot of neons. Actually this neon was hanging in the back and in the front there were much more uh, bigger neons that we'll see in a moment. It's uh -huh. like uh, you can see some yes, and of course indeed. Some means, uh, well, literally, it means alone. 
but it was uh, Sam is the name of the shop where uh, you um, walk on yourself and pick up the products and go to the uh, cash. Uh, so it was like also something new in the communist times. Uh, now it's every shop is looking like that, but then it was a novelty, mm -hmm. and also Spoem. Wow, this is it's the, a big old Spoem yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah, this is the characteristic uh, name of the this cooperative. That you can still find in the streets of different cities. Definitely, it's very sort of one of the most kind of characteristic symbols I think you can see in in that sort of uh, the, for companies in Poland because it's almost sort of difficult to make out. Exactly what it's certainly for a foreigner. You can yes. first look at this, it's quite difficult to make out this is an S, then you can sort of see this is the P and O, and this somehow appears like it might be a T, but it's a W. And yes. yeah, it took me years to work <laughs> out this is poem. <laughs> yes, and it's actually interesting because, uh, well, this poem cooperative gave us this neon. Uh -huh. And they also renovated the neon. It uses very long uh, glass tubes. And actually, in some places, you can see that the colors aren't uh, very well <laughs> matched. So we can see two, for example, shades of uh, white. Yeah, I can yes. see a sort of <laughs> slight mismatch with the. Uh... Yes, but that also interesting because you can see actually here uh, the two neon tubes are connected together. Uh huh. Because um, they are really long. So, uh, well, you don't have such long uh, glass tubes now available. So. And that's the result, that <laughs> the colours don't match very well here. So, uh, which section are we moving on to now? Now we are moving to the cinema section. OK. Uh, we have actually some original seats from the cinema. Oh, there we go. Uh, well, now we, there are more comfortable seats in the cinemas, but those, one, those ones are original ones. Uh -huh. um, we have some neons from those small old uh, cinemas. Uh, they usually now close down because of the competition from the big uh, cinemas that have a lot of viewing screens. Yeah. And one uh, interesting example is uh, Serena Neon. Wow, it's yeah. very sort of... Very interesting typeface. Strange design, yeah. It's, it's Serena is. means uh, mermaid. It was a cinema in the city of Elblanc. Uh -huh. uh, the cinema closed down a, a long uh, time ago and the neon disappeared. So everyone thought it was gone, I don't know, it was sold to the scrap metal. Uh, but then the owner of the building uh, found the neon in a lot of pieces in the storage and gave the neon to our collection. Uh, we received it in, in several uh, pieces, so we had to put it back like a puzzle, uh, only basing on the photograph, uh, photo, uh, picture of the old uh, neon. So mm -hmm. it was a very long and interesting period. And, uh, well, this is one of my favorite uh, neons. It's, yeah, mine too. It's Kino Helios from the city of Grudziądz. It's interesting uh, for a few reasons. One of it is because it has a lot of uh, light, uh, the triple uh, neon tubes in every letter. Mm -hmm. And actually here you can see that it's uh, handmade because, uh, well, they are not uh, perfectly made, so, yeah. but that gives a nice uh, touch to the neon. Um, and uh, interesting thing is that this neon was renovated like uh, five years ago. But uh, using uh, original materials, um, there are really thick uh, glass tubes here used. And such thick glass tubes aren't produced anymore. Uh, but the glass maker had in his storage those long uh, glass tubes that he didn't use for 20, 30 years. So he could use, he used, he decided to use them in this neon to reflect the original design. And he also used uh, powder from uh, produced in Eastern Germany, in socialist Eastern Germany <laughs> state. So although you can this, almost taste the socialism yes. coming off it. Yes. Right? So although this neon was like renovated five years ago, completely original uh, socialist materials were used here, mm -hmm. and so the result is, in my opinion, very nice.
ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the reenactment of one of the most historical battles that took place in Poland. The battle known as Oshinka Grochowska took place 188 years ago, and it was what ultimately stopped the Russians from taking over Warsaw. In the year 1795, Poland was partitioned by three of its neighbors, Russia, Prussia, and Austria. They were wiped out of the map of Europe, but almost 30 years later, they rise up against the Russian forces in what otherwise known as the November Uprising. Thanks to this very battle, the Poles managed to stop the Russians from invading Warsaw, taking over the capital, and potentially spare the lives of thousands of civilians. Many Poles fought on the side of France during the Napoleonic Wars. As a result, the French set up a semi-independent state called the Duchy of Warsaw in 1807. After Napoleon's defeat at Waterloo and the 1815 Congress of Vienna, Russia took control over Warsaw again. However, one of the provisions of the Congress of Vienna stipulated that the semi-autonomous status of the Duchy of Warsaw would remain in the new Russian satellite state known as the Congress Kingdom. The Polish Congress Kingdom was allowed to have its own constitution, one of the most liberal in Europe of the time. But a couple of years after the Vienna Congress, the Russian Tsar started ignoring the constitution. As a consequence, the Poles decided to revolt against the Russian Empire in 1830, an event which became known as the November Uprising. After the fall of the November Uprising, how do the Polish people look back at the event? Mm -hmm. Are there any traditions that spawned because of it? Ledwo upadło powstanie. Pamiętajmy, że ostatnią walczącą osobą była Emilia Plater która nie złożyła broni i wytrwała do Wigilii. We should remember that the last fighting insurgent was Emilia Plater, who did not lay down her arms and persevered until Christmas Eve 1831. It was only upon receiving the message that Warsaw had fallen that she died from a heart attack. Immediately after the fall of the uprising, the Poles started arguing among themselves who was at fault. Many wondered whether it had been possible for the uprising to succeed at all. Hundreds of questions with no answers. There were around 600 memoirs written by veterans who had taken part in the uprising. That's why it's so well known what happened, because it was all well documented. Maurycy Mochnacki writes up the history of the uprising, and he is the one who actually calls it a povstanie, or uprising. It was previously referred to as an insurrection or revolution, but he calls it an uprising of the nations of the Republic. And then Poles look into the situation, wondering whether they could have won military when the Russian army was advancing. They wondered whether it would have been possible to cut it off from Russia by striking it from the south and bringing calamity on it. For 90 years, the military course of action taken during the uprising was pondered. Józef Piłsudski, one of the Polish revolutionaries, creator of the Polish Underground and Riflemen Association, also reflected on this. Finally, after 90 years, in 1920, the Bolshevik army moved towards Warsaw, led by Tukhachevsky, the grandson of one of the 150 Russians killed in Orden's redoubt during the November Uprising when the Poles blew their redoubt to smithereens. The Poles put into practice what they had fought through for those 90 years. The army, by that time Soviet but also Russian, had to be cut off from its own territory. This is what Piłsudski did with his famous south-to-north maneuver and 500,000 Russian soldiers found themselves in a trap. Some of them escaped through Prussia and surrendered to the Germans in the north and the Germans quickly transported them east, while part of them went into Polish captivity, from which they were let out only after the end of the war. But it was one of the greatest victories in Polish history, resulting from a precise analysis of the reason for the fall of the uprising. Remember, the most important factor in the fall of the November uprising was the fall of spirit. Seven and a half thousand wounded young men in the Battle of Ostrowenka dented the Poles' faith that it was possible to defeat the Russians, so it was better to end this uprising than endure on a continual bloody battles. In 1920, when Poland was reborn, there was no choice. The Russian army had to be defeated, and then Poles looked at history and reminded themselves that like Tukhachevsky's grandfather died in Warsaw, so would the Red Army commanded by his grandson. Exactly 90 years after the outbreak of the November Uprising, 
Poland found itself waging a war for its survival against Russia again. Next up, we will speak with Dr. Shishrov Yabłonka about the importance the collective memory of the November uprising had for Poland. So you were just talking about traditions, and I was wondering what events of the November uprising, what traditions it, that left an imprint on the current Polish army or in terms of culture. Trzeba powiedzieć, że oddziaływanie powstania było większe niż samo powstanie. Opór Polaków przeszedł w legendę. It should be noted that the impacts of the uprising were greater than the uprising itself. The resistance of the Poles became a legend, a greatest song modeled on the French national anthem with lyrics written by the French poet Smeja de Lavigne, splendidly translated into the Polish language with Kurpiński's music, is the song of Warsaw, Warszawianka. Today is a day of blood and glory. Let it be a day of resurrection. It became not only the hymn of Warsaw, but all future uprisings that would erupt. Two teenage participants, military drummers during the battle, actually lived to see an independent Poland. One of them lived until the age of 104 and died in an independent Poland. He was buried in his November uprising uniform. Dodajmy, że legenda powstania zostanie podtrzymana, podniesiona do rangi. The legend of the uprising was raised to artistic ranks by Stanisław Wyspiański, who would write two great dramas, November Night and Liberation, in which he would present the most important issues for Poles during the collective effort, which no doubt the uprising was, that would finally bring independence. The servitude to Russia wasn't survivable without the uprising. It was an important span in the bridge, thanks to which the nation got through a swamp of enslavement. It didn't drown in the Swamp. Through uprisings and culture, a bridge was built over the sea of captivity. Myśmy po prostu powstaniami i kulturą budowali most nad morzem niewoli. Tradycje powstania listopadowego utrwaliły się również w wojsku polskim. Otóż traditions of the November uprising also established themselves in the Polish army. Every year on November 29th, students of the Officer Cadet School in Warsaw perform in uniforms from this era, very nice uniforms in fact, black and yellow ones with amaranths and putties on fantastic hats on their heads. They parade from their school in the Łazienki Park in Warsaw via the Belvedere Palace towards the arsenal building. Obtaining this arsenal on the day the uprising erupted was decisive in achieving success. The people of Warsaw received weapons and defended themselves while Russian armies fled in a hurry. This is one of the moments which is celebrated. Another is celebrated in the fields of Olszynka Grochowska on the anniversary of the battle from February 25th, 1831, and around that date, always on the weekend, there is either a construction of the battle or the laying of flowers and paying homage. There are plans to construct a mound and recently the topic of creating a museum at the place of the Battle of Olszynka Grochowska, which will be dedicated to the uprising, was raised to create a 50-meter high mound from which it will be possible to see the battlefield. Inside there will be a museum with a panoramic view of the battle so young people will understand what went on in that battle. And finally, a chapel where the bones of both Poles and Russians who died, still being found in forests and fields in the area, will be placed. Therefore, a very important postulate remains before the nation, commemorating the battle accordingly and ensuring that it receives its rightful place in history. As we can observe, the memories of the historical battles are still kept alive and well, even centuries after the battles have taken place. Clearly, the struggle for national sovereignty is still a key value within the Polish collective memory. That's it for today. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History. Hello and welcome back to Poland Daily Travel. We're glad you tuned in. Oh, we're glad you're watching us on YouTube. Lots of stuff to see. Your best source for travel information about Poland. We'll be venturing forth soon to exciting sites around Poland and nearby. But today we're in Warsaw and we're focusing on the Warsaw Old Town. We start at St. Anna's Church 
and talk about its significance and how Poland saved Europe twice. That's right, count it, twice. We'll be looking at some of the secrets of the old town, some of the stories and vignettes, and uh, just two guys going for a walk on a sunny day. So stay with us on Poland Daily Travel. We're really glad you tuned in, because why do we do this? We do it for you. Stay with us. So we are on, what's the name of this? Vanski? Vonsky Dunai? Vonsky Dunai Street yeah. is the first street in Warsaw's old town where Jewish families started to live. So that's first Jewish quarter in Warsaw of 14th century, right in here. And we are having the small market square. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I would like to tell you about. So the small market square and the big market square right behind the corner, wherever you travel, there are two market squares, the small one and the big one. Right. So the small one was for lower quality products and the big one was for better quality products. And that's why these two are separated, just like, you know, in supermarket or Walmart, you are having the separated stuff from each other. You know, you don't put cheese and meat in the same refrigerator. Similar kind of thing was in here. More, oh, mostly smelly products or fish were available in here. By the way, smelly products? Co uh, correct. <laughs> Flowers too. <laughs> Flower, well, flowers are also smelly, they but in a different smell. way. Yeah. Good smell. Mm -hmm. Good smell. Yeah, what, there's a plaque over here. What does this say? Well, there were many Warsovians who had to work for the Germans during World War II. Some of them were killed, and that's why such plaques we are having in here. So those who were normally on everyday life providing uniforms or clothes, they had to work for the Germans. Oh, and then this is having... interesting, yeah, yeah. Here lived Alexander Chalmers. A Scot merchant, exceptional royal clerk, and faithful subject of the Polish king came to Poland around 1676. Would have been Sobieski, right? Or just after him? Yes, that's, uh, these are Sobieski times. Sobieski yeah. was elected in 1674. So two years later, this man from Scotland is coming to Poland. And there were a few uh, Scottish people who came to Poland in these days. That was a moment when they uh, had the big problems with English. And uh, Poland was a good place to emigrate to. Remember, we were talking about this. Hey, it was four-time mayor of Warsaw. Yeah. I guess it's warmer in Poland than it is in Scotland. That's well, a joke, folks, but it may be true. Well, <laughs> certainly uh, certain maybe, places. Maybe, maybe not such humidity at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but I am not sure if uh, uh, there are the same kind of barrels they are having over there. The same barrels? Yeah. Of what? Of that. Oh, you mean uh, of, uh, <laughs> the old ale? Well, the old you, ale? You know. <laughs> or the old whiskey? <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, 3 p.m. is coming Friday, okay. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's 5 p.m. somewhere. <laughs> I think we may have to end this with a beer today. I don't know. No, absolutely. Look, we're going to need a beer because we've been through so much history. Every time we go out, we go through so much history. And then we find ourselves, uh, uh, our conversation, going from these very serious subjects to lighter subjects. That's really interesting. A Scottish guy who came here, he must have learned Polish perfectly well, because well, he was four times mayor of Warsaw. He changed his name from Alexander Chalmers to Alexander Chalmers. Yes, Alexander, we have the same yeah. one in Polish. Well, that's the same name, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's he the didn't same. have to change that, but his last name he changed. That was what I was saying. That's what that says. I, I didn't know. Once upon a time, Poland was a country of immigrants. People were coming in here from all around Europe. And then Poland started to emigrate also to your countries. So look, this is the cyculation of life. Uh, once yeah. you are on the top, then you are on the bottom, remember? Doesn't matter where you are at the moment, but it does matter ah. which direction you are heading. Yeah, it sounds like Bob Dylan. When you're on the top, you'll find out when you reach the top, you're on the bottom. That's a quote from Bob Dylan. But this is Poland Daily, and we're walking in the Warsaw Old Town. Stay with us, stay with me, stay with Arthur, and uh, we're gonna have some more fun. Yeah. See you in a little while. Let's take a bow. On these beautiful breasts, untouchable, absolutely. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so you said walking and talking, right? Not standing and looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me let me have a go. Yeah. yeah. Poland Daily Travel, a special edition. Stay with us, don't go away. We are walking in the Warsaw Old Town. Thanks for staying with us. It's a beautiful day for it. It's not quite balmy summertime, but it's balmy for February, I can tell you. And uh, we're just gonna walk right over here to the center of, of the Old Town Square, I guess. There's still some Christmas lights. Look, they still have the Christmas lights up. That's what we love. <laughs> Christmas is not over in Warsaw Old Town. Isn't that Proper fantastic? Christmas tree <laughs> is taken down in August in that Polish flat. <laughs> is that right? Exactly. I love that, actually, because I love Christmas. And uh, uh, it's, it's really nice that they don't give up on it here. There's also the ice skating rink here. The ice skating yeah. rink and uh, in around the symbol of Warsaw, the mermaid who holds a sword and a shield in her hand so to protect our city from particular threats. So after we heard all of this, well, she might have had some holidays in her career. And uh, these little cottages providing traditional Polish food and beverages a little bit of cozy music, so to have your ice skating experience in the city center of Warsaw's old town. So what this spirit is reminding you of? Maybe Brussels, maybe some Italian cities, maybe what? Well, I don't know, it reminds me of... Uh, yeah, a classic European old town. I mean, yeah. There Even was. though it's been reconstructed, it is so faithfully reconstructed. And by now, it's been a long time. It's been since the early 50s uh, when they Na started 19, uh, 1953 is a moment when this section was reconstructed. 1956, when the rest of the old town uh, buildings were reconstructed. Well, redone, so, they were yeah. just modernized at the moment so that the colors look fresh. And uh, they remind of so many different styles. Guests in here from all around the world tell me, hey, Art, it reminds me of Brussels. It reminds me of uh, Italian cities. It reminds me of German, Austrian or Budapest because it's a combination. And families from all around Europe were living in here. And, and that's why it's an eclectic combination till nowadays. Uh, so the city, even though it was destroyed, didn't, love its, didn't lose its spirit. Uh, it, st it still has this little something from <laughs> It still has Europe. a Christmas spirit. I cannot believe it, that it's still Christmas here. Oh, yes. It's wonderful. Traditional Paul. Hey, maybe let's take a look at the food available in here. Let's take a look at some of the food available. Okay. I think it's a good idea, but first I want to point out, do you see way up there, there's a uh, window, that brown window. You see it just sticking up? Yes. Uh, I stayed in that room. No. A long time ago, yeah. It was Warsaw Historical Society. So I got, I knew, had some friends when I was coming, came over here on a visit, and they, they put me... Warsaw uh, Historical Society, so that was her name. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. That was her name. That's what I call her. That's her code name. I understand. No, it was like, uh, you have code names? We were talking about code names in the, in the, uh, in the home army. Well, yeah. Uh, Sometimes you need other code names. Anyway, you want to look at some food? Yes. Okay, let's go look. If you are twisting my arm. Yeah, okay. Are you hungry? <laughs> no, no, not at all. You know, I don't eat in between the meals. No. It's probably a good practice. Let's go this way. 